Hi, I want to welcome you to the AXO competition. This is visual arts painting. And my name is Annie Ruth. I am a visual artist who is here in Cincinnati. I'm the founder of a unique nonprofit called Eye of the Artist Foundation. And so I'm happy to welcome you into my backyard right here on the side of my garage is a mural that I presented. Uh, I painted it. It's called actually Growing Readers. And it's in the style that I create for my children's books illustrations. I call it Direct Innocence, where I use simply the bold primary and secondary colors to relay a very complex thing. So using simplicity to relay a complex thing. So I'm Annie Roof, your girl, and we're going to dive into how you can get 100 points on that AXO competition. All right, so how to achieve 100 points in your respective competition category. How to choose a topic that brings an emotional connection with the audience. Demonstrate excellence and go beyond the minimum standards because you really want to pour your heart and soul because your art is a reflection of you. How to fine tune your presentation to show confidence, create interest and passion in whatever subject matter that you're dealing with. Okay, everybody, I want to first give you the definition of what the category of painting is. Painting is art created by applying pigment on a two-dimensional surface with a brush, knife, or hand, and the manipulation of digital processes with a computer. Now, examples include, but are not limited to, oil, acrylic, watercolor, gouache, tempera, ink, fresco, spray painting, etc. applied on a canvas, canvas board, paper, mixed media, or any flat surface. So make sure y'all keep that in mind, painting. The requirements are only one project can be entered. The national office will provide easels. You are required to make an oral presentation that doesn't exceed three minutes. And you've got to explain the methods and techniques that you've used to create your project. And here it is, y'all, the contestant, you. You've got to be available to answer questions from those judges to explain your project. And your submission should be no larger than 36 by 48. That's inches, y'all. And framing is optional. Contestants will be judged by the following criteria. Color, 20 points. Composition, 20 points. Craft, 20 points. Line and form, 20 points. And the final criteria, theme, 20 points. That will give you a total of 100 points. So let's do this, y'all. Okay, everybody, I wanted to show you an example, a great example of color. And here's where you can't go wrong. If you are a painter, you already know the color wheel. And so opposite colors on the color wheel are called complementary colors. When you're painting, if you're using complementary colors, so like give you an example. In this painting, you see lots of greens, but you're also going to see red. When you use green and red, which are complementary colors, they make each other pop. Uh, the, the viewer has no choice but to see it pop. Like the complementary color, if you're choosing blue, you already know that color wheel. The complementary color of blue is orange. And then the complementary color of yellow is purple. So as I created this piece, this is actually a reproduction of one of my originals. It was a great commission that I did. I'm using the greens in the background, but I'm also using variations of the red to make those colors pop in the eyes of the viewer. So get that etched in your mind. I almost kind of memorize that color using complementary colors or what they call split complementary colors, like the complementary color red and green, right? And you already know that if I take red and yellow, that's making orange. So if you add that split complementary color, it's going to make that piece pop anymore. So even more. So remember, you already know the magic word is color. All right, y'all, so we're talking about composition. Um, I have the advantage because I'm both a graphic designer and a fine artist. Most of my professional training came in graphic design and commercial art. 
and I, I switched more to the fine art, much of that is self-taught for me. But I learned uh, very early as a graphic designer, there are certain elements that you want to bring the person in. You want to draw them in. Composition. So you'll see, you see lots of very defined, square, straight, angles, and lines, right? But within the middle there, you are seeing movement. The lines that are free-flowing and, and curved actually create movement. You want to use those elements of lines and curves and angles to create your composition. You also want to, within your composition, to, to balance your piece. So within here, you'll see very detailed areas of, of mixed media. Make the mixed media, the lines and the compositions, and even where you place the colors, make that work for you. Make it send a message as well, like throughout here, the, the resonating theme is the butterfly. So you'll see several butterflies depicted even in the larger butterfly. Make that work for you. So just think line, angles, um, shadows, lights and darks, variations of hues. Um, could be um, lighter, darker, texture are all kind of fit into that composition. Can't go wrong when you, when you do that. And I'm going to tell you this too. Explore, create what they call, I think in fine art they call it painting studies. In graphic uh, design they call it rough drafts. So take yourself, draw and redraw that image. Study even some of the underlying themes that, that focus around the butterfly. I'll give you an example. In my composition I actually use, in the original piece, I, I sewed in original cowrie shells because cowrie shells represent wealth and money and exchange in African culture. So not only am I sharing a theme of metamorphosis, I am the change, I'm putting a sense of my personal self into the art as well. So pour your personal self and heart into your art as well. All right, I am so excited about this project. So what you're seeing is actually a replica, an original replica of one of my paintings where I worked with 32 different students. And so within here, they were actually using some of the techniques, the same techniques that I use in my artwork. Painting, using mixed media, uh, and using it authentically. So if you, your craft is about being authentically you, so don't try to mimic anybody else's style. Use the technique and materials that you normally would use in your craft. So I'll show you here. So in getting the butterfly, and bringing out the wing of the butterfly, I, uh, this particular person was trying to demonstrate mountains and peaks and valleys. This was achieved by mixing sand directly in with the paint. And then below are actually some authentic African fabrics because we wanted that, that West African theme to resonate from the artwork as well. Now, in mixed media, there is no right or wrong uh, into what material you can use in your craft. I am a mixed media artist proudly. So I actually go to the kitchen to get achieve the texture here. We're actually using navy beans. Navy beans mixed into the paint to give that texture there. And remember what I told you about complementary colors? It's, it, there's no getting around it in your craft. I use it. You got your reds. You got your greens. All right? So craft, be authentically you. Work it out. It may take... If it takes you two hours to work on an area, do you pour excellence into it and let your craft be a reflection of you and a reflection of excellence. So here we go. Theme. You want, you want theme to really resonate from, I say right here, a true place. So if you're dealing with uh, sensitive topics like social justice issues or, or racism or just whatever, don't just do a, a theme because you think it's popular. Make sure that you feel that theme and you relate personally to that theme because that way you'll make the image pop even more. Now, my theme on this one, you, you're going to be really um, happy to hear how this inspiration came. There was a butterfly hair clip, just a simple plastic hair clip in the shape of a butterfly that I was sitting working one day and I saw that butterfly. Now, for those of you who have seen the butterfly, 
Yes, the butterfly is a, a very complex creature because it starts as a caterpillar and, you know, it kind of evolves into this beautiful thing with wings. This right here is a piece, the name that I gave it is called Metamorphosis. I am the change. And so within the composition or in the theme, I just done switch categories on y'all, but that's okay because that's how we are. Just do it's all flowing together. In this theme, you actually see, you see individuals that are in there. And because I am, spirituality is very important to me. You can actually see the individuals with their arms raised in praise throughout the flow of the butterfly. Now, if I was doing a, a visit at your class, I would ask you with no right or wrong answer, how many people do you see in this particular artwork? And that's okay, because it's always about no right or wrong answer. You're, as an artist, you are sharing your perspective. But don't be surprised because the viewer is bringing their perspective to your piece as well. So be open to your piece, kind of sharing multidimensional messages. So don't forget, theme. Okay, you want to choose a competition category based on your current talent, your skill, and your aspirations. I mean, don't just do something because somebody else is doing it. Choose it from a place of where you are. Okay, I'm, I'm a hone into this, y'all, and I want you to hear me clearly. Make sure you got a clear understanding of what your category is. And sometimes you got to pull from teachers and mentors. You got to do the research. You got to do the homework and really know your material inside and out. And if ever in doubt, ask somebody. Dive in, okay? Don't just, don't just assume you know it all. This is serious business because we're shooting for 100. So know your stuff. All right, on this project, you don't want to wait to the last minute to start doing a painting. You want to start early. Do a little bit each day. You know, pour your heart and soul into it. And what I find is if, if you're tired, put the artwork down, come back to it. All right, and then the other thing too, you might wake up in the middle of the night with this grand idea or grand technique to pour into. I say when the inspiration is coming, Pour it in. And if you start early, you'll be able to do that. All right. This is where it's really key. Find that mentor who can give you feedback on what you're creating. You want to develop a timeline where you can kind of see how the project is going. And here's where the sensitivity comes in. We as artists, you know, we pour our heart and soul into it. And the last thing we want to hear is somebody saying, oh, maybe you can dive into this a little bit more. But that is what's going to help you. So we call it in our art field, critique. Let your mentor or even several people who are professionals in that area critique your work. It, it, it don't best, you know, not, not getting too deep on y'all, but I hear something called iron sharpens iron. So you want some seasoned iron. You want somebody who's been doing this for a while to be your mentor and give you honest feedback to say, hey, maybe you can fine tune this color mixture a little bit better. Or maybe have you considered doing that? Be open to listening to the mentor's advice and critique. But the most important thing is excellence. Do your best. Don't rush it. Now, here's the main thing. Repeat after me. Say, keep the main thing. The main thing is research, y'all. You just can't just jump into this. You want to do some research. Find out some of the other winners in previous AXO competitions. What made your project stick out? You know, you can do, and I know y'all already doing this already, you can view some YouTube videos. You want to actually become confident in sharing about your work verbally. So you got to know your work inside and out. So not only are you researching previous winners or re researching styles and techniques, you're also researching, practicing, verbalizing what you're putting down on your piece. So I can have the most outstanding piece but if I don't feel what I'm putting, I haven't researched how to communicate about it, I might leave myself without that winning edge. So if you're creating a piece about, again, social justice, don't just go through the motions of saying something because you heard somebody say something. Research and know that stuff and bring it from a true place. And you can't go wrong. Practice your presentation. Which means that if you got a cell phone, pull out your cell phone, put it on a tripod or on a camera or whatever, uh, on a table, right? And practice hearing yourself. 
you you can be your best critic. Now, don't be super, super hard on yourself when you practice and you practice and you practice. But here's it's almost like, you know, we, we all know Michael Jordan got to where he was doing because he was out there dribbling on that basketball court in the middle of the night and going, going, going. Art is the same way. You got to keep practicing your craft, which means don't ever arrive to the point to where you think, ah, oh, I got it going on. I'm the best artist because there's always somebody out there who has a little bit better edge than you. So you've always got to be at the top of your game. So if there's free workshops that are available through like the museums, online courses, other um, competitions that might be um, going on, dive on in there. Do your best. But the key word is practice, practice, practice. Not only your craft, but practice your presentation. How do you sound? Are you articulating your words? All right, I would not be Annie Ruth if I didn't give y'all a super, super tip, because I do this all the time. A lot of times when we're creating artwork, and like you said, like we said before, the competition uh, doesn't require framing. But I'm going to tell you that there's nothing like putting something in a beautiful frame. Now, here's, here's my thing. Certain materials that you're using, you might not want to frame. But certain materials that you're using, you might want to frame. A lot's going to, the art's going to kind of tell you which way to do it. So here I got this frame. It is beautiful. It's got the nice simple molding, so it's not going to take away from the artwork. And it's already got the matting with there. I went to the Goodwill, to the thrift store, and paid $20 for this. Now here's my little secret. I went on Senior Citizen Day, y'all, and they had 50% off. So I got this for $10. And I'm able, I'm saving it to put a special piece of artwork in. So you can have your work look professionally pre presented, right, for $10. Or you can wait to the last minute and have to go to the frame store and pay $200. So you want to pay $10 or you want to pay $200. So if you get started timely, like I told you before, hit the thrift store, you get a good frame deal. I want to say thank y'all for taking this time to be with me and allow, allowing me just to share some tips. But on a final note, I want you to tell, I want you to let it sink in. See this to the end with excellence in every step. Show up on time, all right? Don't give up. And this is the Annie Roof tip here. Know that if you have poured your very best into this, that you will achieve. One hundred.